Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Guess What? Come on, guess, what do you think it is? Here's a hint. We're gonna play something, and it's kind of gleaming, and it involves a sort of a team. You could call it Let's Play Gleam Team. But that's not really the name of it, right? It's called Shining Force, because... What's this? Now I go back to town and this kid's standing in my way? Ugh, God, more with this talk to Karen stuff. You know, at this point in the game, it's pretty easy to get lost, because you've just beaten Kane, who's like, not exactly the big bad, but pretty close, and you're not really given any direction. It's really easy to just wander around and have absolutely no idea what's going on. Uh, <clears throat> it just so happens that I, uh, played through this a little bit before I started recording, so I knew I had to come back here and talk to Short Stuff here. And of course, when you talk to her, all she does is tell you to talk to someone else. This is what we call padding the game's length. It's, uh, really not necessary. And now we talk to this girl. Now, if you say no, you can't actually continue with the game, so... I don't want to hear about it, but I'm going to anyway. Wow, that's fascinating! And by fascinating, I mean completely uninteresting. Yeah, indeed. I could lie to her and tell her I got the manual. Let's see what happens. <laughs> uh, okay, fine. Yep, pretty bad. Is that all you have to say? You have no idea what to do. Great! Well, I'm glad we had that conversation. That was very useful to everyone. So, at this point, now that you've been forced to sit through that incredibly dull and not very informative uh, bit of exposition... Oh, I'm sorry. We're not quite done, because we have to talk to Karen yet again. Dear sweet god. Or Kryn, or whatever her name is. Or Kryn is Kryn's her sister, right? I should go to prompt first. It's south of here. But be careful, there are lots of monsters out there. Yep! Well, there weren't when I walked back here. map was completely empty. Although I'm sure, when I walk back outside, suddenly there will be a ton of monsters. Because that's just how this game works. And fair enough. Here they are. Oh, wait a minute! It's not just some monsters, it's Bad Die Job Lady! She's come back to make our lives miserable once again. Now, you might have thought when we fought, uh, Kane of Runefast there, that he was going to be the big bad boss of this chapter. But if you thought that, you were wrong! Actually, Bad Die Job Lady is the big bad boss of this chapter, and she's arguably actually a more ferocious boss than even Kane of Runefaust. I won't go into the details just now. Uh, we'll, we'll have plenty of time for that when we actually get to that battle. I will, however, show you these guys. These are kind of like gargoyles, the Belials, or Belials, or however you pronounce that. Um, they're like gargoyles, except they have a little bit better stats, right? Better defense, very slightly better hit points, much more magic points. The big deal with them, though, is they have Bolt. They're flying enemies with a ton of magic points that cast Bolt level 1. That is not fun. And that reminds me, I'm going to do a quick uh, save state, just in case something goes horribly wrong but I'm not anticipating us having too many problems in this battle. 
in spite of the fact that there are some horrible enemies that we have to deal with. Interesting thing, I didn't realize this until this battle, just because I wasn't paying attention, but apparently, Domingo is not a true flying character in that he cannot fly over mountains. In pretty much any other terrain, he's like identical to the other flying characters, but not when there are mountains on the screen. He cannot float over those. Uh-oh. Buffont might become enve enveloped in a thick fog. Whew, really dodged the bullet there. That was sarcasm, in case you couldn't tell. Because metal does nothing. Oh. There's one other enemy type that's new that I forgot to mention. These guys, the Bow Riders, they're kind of like Lyle. Um, as you can see, they have really high attack and incredibly low defense. Basically, a single hit from anyone will kill them. That's just kind of how it is. But they can deal a lot of damage if you let them survive to get off a shot. Incidentally, the main reason they deal so much damage is you might have noticed they are equipped with a weapon type that we don't have available yet. It's called the Assault Shell. Hmm, maybe that wasn't the best thing I could have done with Dao, but whatever. Anyway, the Assault Shell is a weapon we have not seen yet. It's the, uh, it's the first of the explosive artillery weapons that you can give to archer class units. <sighs> so, I've decided that Xylo is going to spend the day on the beach because he's just lagging way too far behind and as much as I love him and usually use him in these games, um, he's just not cutting it on this playthrough. It makes me sad, but, uh, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of an unavoidable fact. He's just not leveling up at a rate that will allow him to remain useful for the rest of the game. So he is going to pull a Hans there and hang out while the rest of my force goes on and wins this battle without him. So as you can see, Lyle has been promoted since the last playthrough or Let's Play episode, or what have you. Uh, he doesn't look that different, honestly, when he's promoted. The only thing that really differs is that he kind of holds that cannon thing of his cocked upwards when he's not using it. Which kind of looks cool. Makes it, looks like he, makes it, yeah, makes it look like he's going to arc a shot, but he doesn't do that. Which is kind of unfortunate. But I can understand why they would not want to make him do that, because that would involve a whole different set of attack animations for the actual shots, because the shots would have to arc too. So, net result, he ends up looking pretty much exactly the same. I am going to try to spread my guys out here a bit, because I do not want them getting hit with an AoE bolt attack. That would be highly unpleasant. As it is, even just one person getting hit with that would be unpleasant, but I certainly don't want multiple people getting hit. I don't have Aura yet, and without Aura, well, there's only so much you can do to respond to that. I'm going to be spending at least a turn or two going around casting heal level one on groups of people, one by one. And that is no fun for anyone. I'm going to stick Lyle here, I think. Just because hopefully the land effect will help out if, God forbid, that Belial decides to fly over and attack him. Although, now that I'm thinking about it, he has only 13 hit points. That's horrible. A single bolt level 1 spell would probably kill him. That's really no good at all. I'm going to have to think about that. Well, too late to think about it, I guess, but... There are no do-overs in Shining Force, ladies and gentlemen. 
There is only suffering. Suffering and Domingo. Which kind of offsets the suffering. Because Domingo's awesome. Whew. Looks like, uh, that Belial is going to do pretty much the dumbest thing it could have possibly done. Just because it has this crazy idea that it's going to deal damage to Buffon with a regular attack. I won't claim that I like the AI being dumb in this game, but it does have its advantages. You know, you don't have to replay battles quite as often, unless you do stupid things like leave your hero in range of Cane of Runefest. But we won't talk about that. Hmm. Move on right here, I think. <laughs> oh man, I love freeze level three. Unfortunately, it's a bit of a magic point drain. It just uh, it costs a lot to cast. So I'm going to hold off until I have a better uh, target presenting itself. Also, you can see the Belials, they deal pretty decent, or I, I should say they give pretty decent experience points, but not amazing. Uh-oh. Domingo is blanketed by a thick fog. You know what that means. Absolutely nothing. Yep. If someone gives Ilo a beach towel, he's gonna get sand in his fur. Oh yeah, they're all going for Domingo now. By the way, tell me that bow rider doesn't look sweet. <laughs> uh, even blanketed in a thick fog, Domingo saw that coming. That was a pretty slow attack animation. You have to admit. Now, this is a good. Uh, this is a good opportunity for Kokichi to deal some damage, get some experience take out a Belial before it can cast Bolt on my guys. And a nice hit from Kokichi. A much needed defense increase. Kokichi does not have the best defense right now. I would have liked it if he had gained something else as well. Maybe like some attack or something, but his attack's not too bad right now. So I'm not too concerned. But yeah, you can see he really needed that defense because he is not too sturdy at the moment. Hmm. Well, there isn't anyone who can use an AoE attack over there, so there is no harm in lining my guys up. I, on the other hand, can use an AoE attack on these guys with Domingo, and I think I'm going to do just that. And Domingo's level 8. Speed increases by 3, max magic points increased by 4. That's a solid level up. He now has more magic points than Henri. As soon as he gains freeze level three, that'll uh, that'll matter a lot. Because that is a solid three freeze level three as he can cast right now. Say that three times fast. Three freeze level threes. Oh no. I didn't realize gargoyles could put people to sleep. Yeah, they're just like... even uglier giant bats. Hmm. Oh, good to know. I'll have to keep that in mind for the future. Still not worried about Domingo. He, uh, he can handle himself. Even while he's fast asleep. 
because even while he's asleep, he takes one damage from everyone. I think this guy might deal more than one, though. Let's find out. Oh yeah. Oof, that's no good. Yeah, okay, we're gonna have to ride to uh, Domingo's aid here. Because he is not going to survive very long with that bow rider around there. Oh, that was dumb. I should have had uh, Gong use heal level 3. I keep forgetting I have that spell. Oh, well, thank goodness for that. Oh, okay, that's actually useful. We'll have the sleep spell ended. Oof. I really hope I get to take out that bow rider before he kills Domingo, because, uh... That would not be fun. I kind of want Domingo alive. Because he is a good character. Alright, well... There's no reason not to use the heat axe on this bow rider. Because I think that'll actually finish him off. And that means Domingo lives to fight another day. Dude, just barely. Very nice. Holy cow! That was a nice hit point increase for Gort there. I'm impressed. You see that, Xylo? See what Gort just did? How he gained six hit points? Maybe if you did that, you wouldn't be sitting on the beach right now. Stupid warwolf. Okay. Well, here's an opportunity for Henri to deal a little more damage to the enemy at minimal cost. Take out a golem. And she's level 3. A little defense increase, a little speed increase. Pretty good hit point increase. A little magic point increase. That was a good level up, all in all. No complaints from me. And now here's Gong. Looking a little sheepish. Sorry, Domingo. Sorry I was, like, really stingy with my magic points before. I figured we would arrive in time. I know I risked your life and all, and that was kind of uncool. But... You know, no harm, no foul, right? We're still cool. Right, Squid Guy? Dude, that's a that's a good level up for Gong right there. Nice attack increase, hit point increase, magic point increase. The magic point increase especially, uh, he really needed that. With 21 magic points, it's a heck of a lot more useful than 16. Or 17, or whatever it was he had because heal level 3, if I remember correctly, is 10 magic points to use. So every time he gains another sort of echelon, right, another multiple of 10, that makes a big difference in terms of how useful he is as a healer. Lyle is just out of range of that nasty little gargoyle, so he will not be able to participate in taking it out. Unless... Yeah, why not? Let's just have Domingo attack. Let's toy around with this gargoyle a bit. It presents no real threat to me. Especially if it just keeps attacking Domingo, which I kind of think it is going to do. Just simply by virtue of the fact that enemies in this game absolutely hate Domingo. Okay, now you see what just happened there where that Bilal decided it was going to fly up here? I'm pretty sure that was scripted. Right, I think what happens is the people that designed the game figure you're going to bunch your guys up, trying to squeeze them through this horrible little pass, and this Belial's going to be able to fly up and bolt level one them all. Well, I have news for you, Shining Force developers. 
I am no fool. I am not moving down into that pass until that Belial is good and dead. Which is redundant, because the only good Belial is a dead Belial. As far as I'm concerned. There's a nice little opportunity for May. There isn't really anyone, besides arguably Zylo, but he doesn't count because I'm not leveling him up anymore. There isn't really anyone on my force who's like super underleveled at this point. So I don't have to worry too much about saving enemies for my guys. Or at least I don't think I do. I don't know. Lyle and Kokichi could maybe use some more, but they're, they're not, like, useless at this point, I guess is what I'm saying. They're still useful characters. They haven't become like Valbaroy or Zylo. I guess if I want to make sure they never become like Valbaroy or Zylo, I should keep feeding them experience, but I'm not too worried just yet. Gong is holding up really well. I'm impressed with him. Ooh, Kokichi, here's a nice little opportunity for you. And what's more, I don't think anyone can even come intervene. Like, I don't think that Master Mage can move far enough to actually hit Kokichi if he moves over there. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. Unfortunately, this game came out in an era before... Actually, I don't know. This game might have come out after the first Fire Emblem. I'm gonna have to look into that. But for whatever reason, they did not see fit to show you enemy move ranges when it's not an enemy's turn. Like, there's no way to see that move range except for, like, right there, right, where the enemy's actually moving. Which I think is kind of unfortunate. It makes it hard to strategize. Although maybe they figured that was just another thing to let the terrible AI offset. Uh, see? See, this isn't gonna end well. I need to pull back. They're all converging on that pass just like I thought they would. Oh dear. Yeah, Kokichi needs to book it out of there. Funnily enough, steampunk flying helicopter things do not hold up well against giant bolts of electricity. Who'd have thought? Okay. Well taken care of all the grouping issues. Now all I need to do is have Kokichi run like hell. Hmm. Yeah, there's no good place to stick him. Maybe I'll put him here. Uh, he does not have any healing items. That's too bad. See, really I should stick him like up here. That'd make it easy for Gong and Chris to heal him, but I'm concerned about the Belial doing something smart, like coming up and casting Bolt Level 1 on that whole group. I'm just gonna put Kokichi here for now, and hopefully that will not lead to disaster. In fact, I'm just gonna do a quick save state here, just in case, because... Disasters are bad, and I can very easily see one occurring. Alright, let's, uh... Hmm. Maybe I'll just put Domingo over here. Maybe he'll draw in that Belial. And I'll be able to kill it with relative impunity. Uh, yep. Saw that coming. Man, look at that. 
Look how many magic points that stupid Belial has. He can just keep casting Bolt level 1 till it's blue in the face. With absolute impunity. There's really no way to deal with that other than to just kill the Belial as soon as humanly possible. Because you're never going to... Well, maybe you could outlast it, like wait for it to use up all its magic points, but that's a horrible idea. It'll take just serious, serious damage that way. Ugh, God, I hate Belial's. Anyway. Here is an example of a time... Ah, oh, never mind. I thought maybe she might be able to hit from there. No good. No good, I say. Well, that would have been a good example of a time where freeze level 3 would be a good idea. Except that it couldn't reach. So it wasn't. The end. I'm a little perturbed that none of the healers have had a chance to heal Kokichi yet. And this might be a horrible idea, but I'm betting that I'll be able to move Buffon out of the way and heal both him and Kokichi before the Belials have a chance to rain down any more bolt magic. Is it risky? Yes. Is it a bad idea? Possibly. We'll just have to see. Oh, good. Chris is leveling up now. Attack increase. Whoa! Nice defense increase there. Little hit point increase. Nice magic point increase. That was a good level up. No complaints from me. Buffon needs some healing. And I don't want to waste Gong's magic points. Yeah, I was right. It is 10 magic points to use heal level 3. And that's, that's most of what he's got, so... I'm going to try to be cost-effective here, and hope that that does not lead to my characters getting pounded with a rain of Bolt Level 1 attacks. Yeah, we have got to kill this Belial, because we are not in a good formation here. Belial is certainly going to help with that. See, if I were him... I saw this, I'd be like, what do you mean, be Lyle? I'm already Lyle. But then again, I like cheesy puns, so that's probably why I would say that. Hoo <laughs> Oh! And Buffon takes it down with a double attack. Man, I love Buffon. Even if his hair is frightening, he's just an awesome character. That more than makes up for it. I don't know of any character that double attacks with the frequency that Buffon does. That'll do it. See folks, that is why Freeze Level 3 is awesome. Because it can reach from way far away and smack down enemies that are otherwise outside of your reach. And 16 damage! That's, uh, that's nothing to... I don't know, turn up your nose at? Whatever the... whatever the phrase is. The old idiom. I can't be expected to remember these things. I am a busy man. Busy dealing death to the enemies of the Shining Force. Okay. How are we doing? I think we're, uh... I think we're okay on health. Oh wait, Domingo. Domingo needs some help. Alright, I'll move Domingo down and... Let the healing commence. You, Zylo. Don't go through all my sunscreen, alright? I'm gonna need that stuff. Not for a little while, though. Gotta go all the way down there, take out all those enemies, and then deal with Mishila. Hoo-hoo! <laughs> Buffon is on a roll, folks.
unfortunately, is another example of a place where I don't want to clump up my guys. Because that Master Mage, though he doesn't have Bolt Level 1, he does have Freeze Level 2, and that will deal some pretty significant damage all on its own. That was a sad display, Kokichi. You're going to need to uh, make up for that. Oh, and Buffant gets to go again. I think I'm going to have him help out with the Master Mage. That was a nice, solid hit from Buffant. Master Mage can't take much of that. I'll tell you that right now. And the Master Mage is choosing to attack. Deals some pretty significant damage. Um, which is a little surprising. He must be equipped with a Holy Staff. Indeed he is. Okay, so pretty significant damage, but let's be honest, he would have dealt more damage with Freeze Level 2. There's no really good reason for him to have done that. It's a little dumb even though the damage was not quite as pathetic as you might have expected. And Gort laying the smack down on this golem with his helicoptering axe technique. Yeah, not much for me to do. She's just gonna hang out up there. See, here's the thing about this map. I can understand having, like, you know, this pass here. It's what makes the whole map interesting, right? Is you have to figure out a way to get through this pass without getting totally creamed by AoE magic attacks. But this entire map, practically, is covered in this horrible terrain. Which means that the last, like, you know, third of the battle is just going to be a horrible slog, inching step by step up toward Demon Castle. That just seems a little unnecessary to me. Man, Chris really needs to, uh, she really needs to learn heal level 3 already. And ideally, she needs to also get some more magic points. But let's not be too picky. The Golem deals a none-too-impressive three damage. Let's see if Kokichi can finish off this Master Mage here. That'd be a nice, uh, nice little coup for him. And he does. Nice hit. Little level up. Nice attack increase. Nice defense increase. Nice speed increase. Nice hit point increase, yes! That is a great level up for Kokichi. I am going to just to do a little quick save here, because that was a great level up, and I would hate to lose out on that if I had to replay this battle for whatever reason. So, I think what I'm going to do here is move Buffant up here to draw up that golem in another space or so. And then maybe Gong will be in a position to take him out. That'd be nice. Even better would be if I could get Chris to take him out, but uh, I don't know if that's going to happen. Chris is a little bit far away. We'll just have to see. Yeah, Alright. That's pretty much exactly what I expected. Let's move Kokichi over here. Maybe you can start working on that high priest that keeps running away. Inch by inch.
I was afraid that would happen. Well, she couldn't have attacked the golem this turn anyway. So we might as well have her hang out over there. That golem is so sure that he's going to be able to kill Buffon. I don't know why, but he seems oddly intent on it. He really thinks it's going to happen. He's going to head back to Runefast, and he's going to be celebrated as the one guy that managed to take out Buffon. except for the other guys that managed to take out Buffon. But he doesn't know that we have a quick save. He really thought he was going to be a hero golem. Poor golem. I was thinking about having Gong heal him, but... I really want to get Chris heal level 3, so I'm going to start focusing on using her to the extent that I can. I'm trying to remember if this is one of those battles where enemies suddenly appear. I don't think it is, but it would be pretty annoying if it was, so hopefully it's not. Hopefully I'm not putting Gort and Domingo at risk by having them edge up there. I think they'll be okay, though. I mean, those are, that's a pretty hardy pair right there. With both of them backing each other up, there's nothing they can't handle. That's a lie. But they should be able to handle at least a couple enemies. Just as long as uh, we don't have one of those six worms magically appearing at once kind of scenarios, I think we'll be all right. And here's Gong. He'll back them up. Xylo. Still pretty white. He needs to work on his tan. I mean, seriously, look at that fur. He is white as a sheet. This is a good opportunity for him. He's going to soak up some sun. Think about what he did. Maybe he'll even come out of this a better Warwolf. It could happen. You know, you'd kind of think smoke would always be rising from the heat axe, right? I mean, it's a heat axe. I'm just saying. Kokiji's doing alright. I don't think I need to feed that master mage to him. I'd like to feed that master mage to Chris, actually, but there's nowhere I can really... Well, I can move her up here. I'll move her up here. Someone suggested to me that I should do these Let's Plays by uh, recording the playthrough and then going back and commentating on it later. I understand there are advantages to doing it that way, but I don't know. kind of seems like cheating. I want you guys to get the, the real, visceral reactions in the moment as I'm... Uh-oh. I hope this doesn't kill Chris. Whew. Oh! Oh, man! That was close! 
Whew. See? See a reaction like that. You can't, you can't do that after the fact. Right? That's a... Uh, that's an in-the-moment reaction from something unexpected that happens while you're playing. Or while I'm playing, really, but whatever, you know? Why would you want to hear my reaction when I already know it's coming? You wouldn't want to hear that. It wouldn't be nearly as surprised and elated and other words that describe it that I can't think of right now. Ooh, May's leveling up. Nice little attack increase, speed increase, alright. That's a solid level up. I will not complain. Hmm. I have a feeling I might have to do this, because I don't think Blaze level 2 is going to do the job. But it's alright. I like Blaze level 3. It just looks cool. Nice, uh, nice save, Dow, but unfortunately that means that Chris is not going to get the benefit of having actually killed that guy. So she will get the much less substantial benefit of healing herself from getting beaten soundly about the head with the staff. Here's an opportunity for Kokichi to make himself useful. He's going to draw that golem back up towards my main force. And back up towards Chris specifically, because I really do want her to get a chance to kill something and level up again. I have a sneaking suspicion that if she levels up one more time, she will get heal level 3. Don't know why. It's just, just a little gut instinct I have. Hopefully it's right. Because no Shining Force is complete without at least a couple healers with heal level 3. And let's just move Kokichi up a few more spaces. Perfect, perfect. All is proceeding according to plan. Now what I really need to do is put Buffant out front, so that the Golem goes straight for him, and not, oh, I don't know, for Chris. While I do want Chris to finish off the Golem, I do not want her taking the brunt of his, uh, his, uh, fury, I guess you could say. Because as we just saw, she does not have the greatest defense. Oh, that golem just went twice. Luckily, Kokichi's pretty quick on the uh, on the joystick there. Manages to get his helicopter out of the way before that fist lands in his face. His agility's already up to 17. Huge improvement. Chris actually has pretty decent defense, as you can see. It's 24. It's actually the same as Buffant. Theoretically, she could actually uh, stand up to quite a beating from that golem now that I'm looking at it. So I'm going to just stick her right out front. Because she has the same defense as Buffon, she'll only take three damage a hit from that golem. Which means that that golem would have to attack her five times to kill her. And it's not going to survive five full turns. That I can assure you. Zylo just watching. Who am I kidding? He's not watching. He's disgruntled. He's upset. Every time I go down to headquarters and talk to him, he says, I was born to fight. I was born to be on the battlefield. Well, not anymore, Zylo. Maybe you were born to be, but you done screwed up. And now, you were born to be on the beach.
Of course, the Golem's still going to try to attack Buffon, even given the option of attacking a healer. That's okay, though. This will give Chris plenty of opportunity to beat up on him and get some experience. I don't know what Lyle's like class name is supposed to be. Signet? What is that? Sonite? It's gotta be something knight. I don't know what the S is though. Super Knight? Shot Knight? Scandalous Knight? Your guess is as good as mine. Unlike Chris, Dao has awful defense, so I'm going to keep her away from that golem. We'll just start moving Gord around. And May. I'm not too concerned about that golem sweeping around the other side. Even if it could, which I'm not sure it could. I know it wouldn't. It is too happy punching away at Buffant in his crazy plate armor. It is just how it wants to spend this battle. And the remainder of its short, sad life. Ooh, and Chris levels up again. Defense increase. Speed increase. Uh, but no heal level 3. Still, that is pretty good. She now has better defense than Buffon. And at a lower level than he is, I might add. That's impressive stuff. Let's just move Buffon down a little bit here. So we can uh, hopefully start moving the force out a little bit more, away from these horrible little hills. Oh good, looks like Chris is gonna finish the job before he even gets another punch off on Buffon. And so it is. Very nice. Well, she's gotta learn heal level 3 soon, I mean... Look at her. Level 5 already. She's got slow, she's got quick, she's got heal level 2. What else is there for her to learn? Xylo, meanwhile, is off learning an entirely different lesson. About the horrible price you pay when you start slacking off. And after I went to all the trouble of feeding him those enemies, it's sad. That's at least a couple levels I could have given to someone else. Someone who wasn't going to be a lazy bum and totally waste it. May, meanwhile, is elated to be on grass again, where she can actually gallop around. Gort, too. Though, he did, though not so much with the galloping for him more just kind of walking. It's a shame. This is the sort of map that Xylo excels in because he isn't held back by hills or forest. So theoretically, he would have been really, really useful to have around, but his stats are just too crappy. Can't use them. And that is why he is having a timeout on the beach to think about what he did. Or perhaps more to the point, what he didn't do. And what didn't he do, you ask? The answer is he did not gain in his stats in the way a professional warwolf ought to.
I have a feeling that if I move Kokichi down there, this guy's gonna attack him and the other one's gonna follow up with the freeze too and kill him. So I'm just going to wait for the rest of my force to catch up here. You may think I'm ascribing just a little bit too much tactical intelligence to the AI, but... You know, as risky as I tend to play, I do like to exercise just a modicum of caution in circumstances like these. Excuse me. Just had a little sip of water there. It's weird to think about, you know. The sheer amount of talking one does over the course of a let's play like this. The gets pretty dry. Oh, Lyle. Just galloping around. Free as a centaur. You just know he's loving it. Up, and the Master Mages have decided it's time to move up, and with a clear shot at three different characters, chooses not to cast any sort of spell. The Master Mage is... Mm, well, he'll live to regret it, but not for long. And that's one down. That'd be a great opportunity for Chris to uh, whack that Master Mage, but... I don't think she's going to make it down there in time, so I'm just going to have Gon come down here and use some blue fire of Monk Rage on him. That was a nice hit, too. Ten points of damage. Nothing to complain about. And here's Kokichi with the follow-up attack. I think this ought to finish off the mage. And so it does. And now he's level five. Speed increase, a little max hit point increase there, not too shabby. If it weren't for that max hit point increase, I would have been a little irritated about that level up, but uh, all told, not too shabby. I need to make sure Lyle gets at least one opportunity to level up in this battle, because while he is pretty decent, he is only level 1. And I don't want him falling behind. Okay. Well... As you can see, this army is pretty much done. There's really only one more part to this battle. And it's just killing those three. Which, let's be honest, is not going to be that difficult. This is another example of a battle with an unnecessarily long final portion. Because most of the enemies are dead. There's just a few stragglers. 
they're all the way over there. It's going to take forever to reach them because of the terrain. It's just... Ugh. And what's more, they're even breaking up, right? They're, they're like approaching individually, which is so stupid. I just can't even tell you how stupid that is. Like, that golem was the only thing that that bow rider and that priest had going for them. Without the golem there, I'm going to be able to march right up and knock that guy out in a hit or two. Not very smart. But, such is the game's hatred for Domingo, it would seem, that he can draw a golem even out of a favorable defensive position, just for the possibility that maybe he might be able to deal a little bit of damage to Domingo before I crush him. That is true hate, people. Yep. What did I say? Going for Domingo. Oh, that's sad. Can't even deal more than one damage to him. It's probably the saddest part of all of it. Meanwhile, that High Priest can't decide, oh, maybe if I move one step closer, then I'll be able to heal that Golem. Yeah, you're not going to get a chance to heal that Golem, High Priest. I have news for you. That Golem is going down. I suppose it's possible that, uh, you might be able to get off a heal 3 on him at one point. Particularly because I intend to milk this golem for every last experience point on Lyle's behalf. Because he could use a level up or two. He doesn't need a level up, you know, in the same sense Xylo does, but... He could use a little bit of an attack boost, defense boost, hit point boost, pretty much anything, really, to keep him in the game. Uh, yeah, that High Priest is definitely going to uh, be providing a little bit of support to that Golem. And that's okay. I am not concerned about it. If anything, that just means that Lyle will get more experience points out of the bargain. Oh yeah, look at that. He is so close to leveling up, folks. Just a little bit more, and magic will happen. Just out of curiosity, I want to see what Domingo will do to this golem when he attacks. Okay, so just one damage. Nothing too impressive. It is kind of funny, though, that a squid sitting on a golem's face deals as much damage to the golem as the golem punching the squid does. Think about that for a minute. That is one thing that I always found sort of... <sighs> Maybe idiotic isn't the right word, but something close to it about these combat systems where characters have physical defense that arithmetically affects the damage that enemies do. Because after a certain point, right, when you, when you have defense effect attack like that, you're going to reach a point where certain enemies just deal one damage with every attack. Or in some games, even zero damage, as, uh, as happens in Fire Emblem. And, I mean, that's, that's kind of cool for a sense of, like, you know, character progression and, you know, a sense of, like, how powerful your guys are getting, but if you think about it, it's kind of ridiculous that that is going to deal one damage. Really? And what's more, it, uh, is he going to waste a heal level four? Yes, he is. Oh, if I were an AI programmer that worked on this game, I would be so embarrassed by that. Anyway, 
like I was saying, in addition to the fact that it's completely unrealistic. It also kind of hurts the challenge of the game, frankly. That's not a very good level up, Lyle. You're gonna have to do better than that. Like, if you have characters who you know the enemy is not going to deal any damage to worth talking about, that just hurts the game. In my opinion. I don't know. You might disagree. You might think I'm being a, a big whiny pants for complaining about that. But just think, I mean, it was only, what, two battles ago that these golems were wreaking havoc on my guys? Now they can barely touch them. Holy cow! I did not expect that, folks. Yikes! Those guys have really high attack. Gong, meanwhile, is just a little squishy. I'm starting to regret putting him up against that uh, high priest. I think I'm going to have Gong tactically run away screaming here and heal himself, and hopefully he will not get killed by the high priest. See, that's what all, in my opinion, that's what all battles should be like, right? Your characters should always be at risk. I should not be able to just toy around with enemies in the way that I do in so many of these battles. It just isn't good design. That's just my opinion. You can disagree, but it is my opinion. And a decent little level up for Buffon. Not too shabby. I had to make sure Gong didn't die there. I was not about to mess around with that High Priest any longer. And this bow rider is going to be going down in just a turn or two. Once I painstakingly crawl my force over there. Gong, meanwhile, is my only healer with any magic points left. Which is sort of sad. I'm just going to have Domingo sit on this guy. Domingo, Domingo just sat on that bow rider's face for massive damage. Four damage isn't really massive damage, but it sounds cooler than saying for four damage. Okay. And Kokichi in here. I think he might be able to finish the job in a single hit. Let's find out. And yes, he does. Holy cow, he could have one shot in that bow rider. Nice work, Kokichi. Yep, Mishila. This is actually, right now, this is the first time in the entire game you find out Bad Die Job Lady's name. I think I mentioned it earlier, but I only know that because I've played this game like a million times. So, I'm not going to say too much about Michelle on the Sword of Light, because we are out of time. I'm going to save that for the next episode. Um, but yeah, that is the battle leading up to Demon Castle. I hope you all enjoyed watching. I know I enjoyed playing. I will see you all next time when we next play Let's Play Shining Force.